Tonight, Wales This Week looks into the secret story of Britain's chemical warfare experiments on young soldiers. We travel back to where it all happened, with former servicemen living in Wales, to find out what was done to them. What are you expecting? Uh, I hope they'll show me everything that I did, a little bit more than what they've told me in the letter. The government may have opened its books to the servicemen, but there are still questions they seem reluctant to answer. It wasn't done All in many of them. All I can do is give you the answer that I've just given to you. You have a good enough close-up now? this notice on the wall where you work, you might think, well, that's a cushy option. A week off work and a week's full pay, all for taking part into research into the common cold. Would you give it a try? These guys did. The pain down the, down the side of the neck was, was absolutely excruciating. You felt that all hell had broken loose. You were vomiting, your eyes and nose were running. They were pulling my tongue out with some wooden tweezers. You think, God, are we going to get over this? Like, It, it made me unconscious instantly. I'm, I mean, I don't remember anything about it. These men were young soldiers in the 1950s. Now, they thought they were volunteering for research into the common cold. But once they'd signed up, they were brought here to Porton Down in Wiltshire, the country's top secret research facility into chemical weapons. In 1956, Alan Morris was a young signaller in the Royal Engineers. Sitting around in the barracks on national service, most young soldiers, like Alan, were bored. There was nothing worse than guard duties, especially weekend duties. You'd do anything to get out of these duties because you were tied up for the whole weekend. The same year, Peter York from Crinant near Neath was a young soldier in the infantry. He remembers being incredibly fit. I was extremely fit. When we did our physical efficiency tests, um, I finished with every single test. I was 10 uh, out of 10. Both men checked their barracks notice board to see what duties they'd been assigned. There, they clearly remember seeing an appeal for volunteers. It was then that I saw the notice wanting volunteers for research into the common cold at Porton Down. It just called for volunteers for common cold experiments at uh, Porton Down in Wiltshire, which didn't really mean anything to me. Basically, the requirement is for parties of 12 male volunteers who are physically fit to come to Porton for a fortnight. It is not possible to publish details of the tests in advance. Young servicemen were attracted to Porton by the lure of extra pay, good food and beer and relaxed discipline. Most of all, it was a chance to get away from the grinding boredom of barracks life. In between experiments, you had a lot of time off. The food was exceptional. When we were there, it was, as they would say in military, it was a good sky. It was a holiday camp. But they soon found that holiday camp had a price tag as they were marched away for experiments. We were put into a gas chamber. It was a room, really, with a glass wall. And behind the glass wall were scientists, people taking notes. And they could speak to us through, through microphones. And they gave us instructions what to do. This is fight. When they pumped the gas in, you certainly knew there was gas in the gas chamber. It was most unpleasant and it was difficult to breathe. I thought initially it was something to do with the common cold. What, I don't know, but, um, you know, as you went through different experiments, you know, like in the gas chambers, common sense would tell you, well, God, this is nothing to do with the common cold. Peter and Alan didn't know it, but they were both in experiments to test a new tear gas that was being developed. Once in the chamber, they were hit with CS gas. I found you couldn't close your eyes and escape it. And when we asked the questions why, because I thought that would stop the pain, they said it 
the new gases um, would be absorbed through the skin. So there was no escaping it. It was quite scary because for the first few minutes that you come out, you think, God, are we going to get over this? Like, But after being out in the fresh air for 10, 15 minutes, it gradually gets better. So why were these men needed for experiments at Porton Dome? It was built during the First World War to counter Germany's newest weapons. Soldiers were gassed in their trenches with the deadly mustard gas. The British public were horrified at images of blind and broken soldiers being led away from the horrors of the gas attacks. By World War II, Porton's research was really paying off. One of their greatest achievements was getting gas masks to every man, woman and child in Britain. But the peace of post-war Britain was not to last. During the Cold War, as the West feared Russian invasion, a huge recruiting campaign got underway to get more volunteers for Porton Down. And then to go into a chamber containing a tear gas. Not a poison gas, a tear gas. All right, any questions about that? This is all the By the late 1960s, the recruiting campaign had changed. The common coal story appears to have been dropped. In 1966, Ron Abel volunteered, knowing he would be involved in experiments with CS gas. Ron knew the value of the research and, as a soldier, saw CS used during a tour in Northern Ireland. When I was in Northern Ireland, in the riots and the crowds, and it was actually deployed, it was good in that theatre because it was open but in the small confines of the gas chamber back in Portendale was a lot more different. All you had to do in the gas chamber was put dominoes together and last as long as you could in there. What Ron didn't know was he'd been exposed to a vomiting agent six times more powerful than CS. Once this stuff came in, we knew it wasn't tear gas because it really ripped into your throat and into your chest like a burning poker down there really burn everything it was a bit of sweat it attacked and i mean really really attacked really burned unlike the others ron didn't feel he'd been duped into volunteering but 10 years ago he developed throat cancer he's angry porton didn't follow up on his health I can't talk for long without taking water. I've lost my jaw. I've lost all the side of my neck. I can't feel nothing. Alistair Hay is a leading expert on poisons. He's examined the records of former Porton volunteers. We know chemical agents are designed to hurt people and to kill people. Uh, and it's very reasonable for people to assume that what they were subjected to might have caused longer-term health problems. But I think servicemen who went to Porton are also in a difficult position because the government never carried out a long-term study to say whether there are or are not any health problems arising out of the tests that were done. That is something they should have done. We put our, in some cases, a life in their hands, and they've abused that right. Why haven't they followed it up? Why didn't they come along and say, oh, as this may happen to you, this may happen to you, at the moment you're right. At the Nazi war crimes trials in Nuremberg in 1946, a code was drawn up which should have protected Porton volunteers. The Nuremberg Code states very clearly that all volunteers should be told from the beginning exactly what the tests will be, what the possible health risks could be, and that volunteers should be recruited without deceit or coercion. But the experience of many former Porton Down volunteers is that the Porton scientists ignored the code.